Hi, I'm Steve. I do research and engineering at NASA. In this Space Ace video, we'll be interviewing NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson. She was the first female commander of the International Space Station, and she holds the U.S. record for most time in space, 665 days. Check out her answers to cosmic questions that kids like you are curious about. How did you know you wanted to become an astronaut? My first exposure to astronauts really was when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon. And uh, I was nine and I thought, wow, cool job. Uh, and it became my goal, not just a dream, but a goal when I graduated from high school and they selected the first female astronaut. And among them was uh, Jen and Lucid, a biochemist. And I was interested in biology, so I thought, well, maybe Maybe I really can become an astronaut. What does it feel like when the rocket is launching? Amazing. The main engines, uh, which are liquid fueled on the shuttle, the space shuttle, actually ignite six seconds before the launch. So you can feel the vibrations, you can you know, hear the engine noise as those three main engines ignite. And they have to be up at 100% power, so they start them just a few seconds early. So they're coming up to full power. And then when we get to zero, that's when the solid rocket boosters ignite. And it's a lot of push. They're getting four, over four and a half millions of pounds of rocket into space. And so there's a lot of vibration and a lot of push uh, to get us going. Uh, what's really amazing is that you get to space in eight and a half minutes. So you're going zero miles per hour on Earth, and then at eight and a half minutes later, you're going 17,500 miles an hour. So, very impressive accelerator. What feelings can you remember about looking down on Earth from space? The most special thing about looking at the Earth um, from space is you get this amazing perspective. So we're up here living on a space station, one where we have generated a life support system that removes the carbon dioxide, provides us with the oxygen, regulates the temperature. And I look down at Earth and it's all that's done for. It's all taken care of. And it's underneath this really thin atmosphere that protects our, our planet Earth. And if I think about it like, you know, we're in a spaceship up in space and we're generating this life support system, it makes me really value that life support system that we have here on this planet. And I think that perspective of needing to take care of our planet, needing to take care of our life support system seems really important because we're experiencing how difficult that is to do in space. And so I think that perspective is probably one of the most valuable things that you get from being in space and seeing our planet from above. You went on 10 spacewalks, more than any other woman. What did it feel like to walk in space the first time? Walking in space, uh, it was, of course, was extremely exciting. And I would say it's probably the most satisfying, exciting part of the job of an astronaut. Um, it, but it's one of the most challenging parts of, of uh, being an astronaut too. Being able to uh, maneuver in the suit against the pressure of the suit, even your hands, every time you grab something, and we're translating, even though it's called a space walk, we're using our hands all the time. We're translating on handrails, we're using tools, and our hands and our forearms have to work against the pressure of that suit. And so you get really tired. So it's physically challenging to do a space walk, plus mentally challenging, because you're being asked to do some really complex things outside. You've got a timeline to hit. You need to be able to get all these tasks done. Usually it's a very important thing, either part of construction or repair. And so there's a lot of pressure involved with doing it. But again, uh, it's one of the most exciting parts of the spacewalk. And oh, by the way, the view is incredible. Do you think we'll find life on other planets? I absolutely think we'll find life on other planets. Um, the Kepler, the Planet Hunter uh, satellite found over 2,000, 3,000 planets similar to ours in just a couple of years uh, out there looking 
And I think there's just got to be based on sheer numbers. So when we talked about looking at the earth, if you turned and looked the other way out to the stars, there's just an amazing number of stars when you're up there. You don't have to look through the atmosphere. The clarity is just amazing. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of stars that we can see just with the bare eye. And you know, each of those is a star that's got planets rotating around it. How many of those planets might be some place we could go? And then to think that our galaxy is one of billions. There just has to be other life. And it may not look like us, you know, the conditions may not be exactly the same, but uh, I absolutely think that discovering life on other planets is gonna be one of the coolest parts about exploration. How can we inspire more girls and women to go into careers in science and in space? I think it's really important for our young people in general, but especially young ladies, to, to be in, inspired by science, all fields of science, math and engineering. And I think the important thing in, you know, for adults is to talk about all the options that are out there. And the fact that, you know, being a geek is actually pretty cool. You get to do some really, really spectacular things. And so trying to impress upon young people that, that these hard sciences aren't really all that hard. They're just exciting and fun. And you just have to dig in and find the one that's right for you. And you can do amazing things, so much more than you might even imagine. What would you say to kids who want to work for NASA? Okay, well, number one, the most important thing is find your passion. It has to be something you enjoy. Any field, science, technology, engineering, math, you know, find that passion and then work for it. Very few of us uh, are ever lucky enough to have something just handed to us. So work for it. And number three, the thing that I think has made me most successful is challenging myself to do something that's more than I really thought I could. And that, the reason that's important is because, you know, sometimes we could say, oh, I don't really want to do that because I'm afraid I might fail. And I, I don't want to try as hard. So I want to have that experience where you push yourself, you challenge yourself, don't be afraid of failing. Learn from it. Make yourself better and then push yourself again. And that's when you will find out you can do so much more. I always wanted to be an astronaut. I never dreamed of being the first female commander on station. I never dreamed of, of being the first female chief of the astronaut office. I did those things because I challenged myself. I pushed myself. I, I never stopped. Thank you for joining us for Space Ace. Until next time, happy exploring.